thank you everybody for coming. This is another exciting edition of the Gnome Foundation Annual General Meeting. Um, if you're not aware, um, the Gnome Foundation is the nonprofit uh, entity that's behind the Gnome Project. We handle a lot of uh, very often boring things behind the scenes, sometimes exciting things. Um, you know, we don't do the the hacking work on the board, that's the community, but um, the board supports the project and the community uh, as best we can. And so every year we have an annual meeting of our members, or those members that can attend, where we present to you um, the things that the board has done over the last year. Uh, we give some of, the, uh, some of the GNOME teams an opportunity to present the things that they've done over the last year. Uh, we'll present financials, which is always extremely exciting. Uh, and then, yeah. Um, and then you all have an opportunity to ask questions of the board. We'll introduce the new board, and you can ask any question you want as long as it's within the code of conduct. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll try to answer them best as we can. Um, and we're going to split this into two parts. The first part will be kind of the year in review, um, including all of those reports. We'll take a short break so you can stretch your legs, and then we'll come back and meet the new board and do the Q&A session. Uh, so before we get started, um, we just wanted to take a moment to remember some old friends that have passed away in the last year. Uh, Telsa Gwynn and Thomas Wood uh, were both very cherished members of our community, of our project. Um, we lost the, both of them uh, since the last Squad X, so um, they were great contributors, they were great friends, so um, you know, we, we thank them for their work and um, our thoughts go out to their families. So, um, so what has the board <laughs> what has the board done from 2016 to 2016, apparently? Um, so there were some main areas of work that we've worked on. Um, and a lot of this stuff, we have teams of people outside the board that do the bulk of the work, uh, but we still do a lot of oversight uh, and support work for these teams. Um, so we make sure that all of our conferences happen. And as I said in the opening, our conferences only happen thanks to the local organizing teams of those conferences, the people in the red shirts today, the local organizers at other events uh, like GNOME.Asia uh, or the Boston slash Montreal Summit. Uh, all of these events you know, uh, can't happen without the local organizers, but we do provide some support services to them. Uh, we help find sponsors wherever we can, um, and that takes up quite a bit of the board's work. Um, Hey, and since I'm talking about conferences, you guys all know about Las Gnome coming up, right? Where's Shri? Hey, everybody should go to Las Gnome, yes? That's right. All right. So uh, no secret that we are without an executive director and have been for the last uh, two years or so. Um, so this has been, you know, very difficult for us. It, it puts... In some cases, it puts more work on the board, um, and in some cases, there's just work that we're not able to get to as a volunteer board without our executive director. So, um, you know, I, I believe we we published from our previous thing. We we had a hiring committee uh, that made a recommendation. Um, we were unfortunately not able to uh, secure that candidate, uh, and so we reformed the hiring committee. Um, they're in the process, they're looking at candidates. I can't, you know, hiring processes are, are, um, are sensitive processes, so I can't give a whole lot of details, but they are absolutely working hard trying to get us a new executive director. So uh, I hope that when the board is standing up here next year, we'll be standing up here with an executive director. So that's, uh, that's about all I can say on that. Um, the travel sponsorship, of course, uh, we do have our, our um, the team, what's their name? The travel sponsorship team, right? The people who handle that stuff. Uh, if you need to go somewhere, getting your flight paid, your hotel paid, uh, we have a team of people who are mostly non-board members who take care of that, but again, the board has to oversee uh, the finances uh, and handle making those payments. Uh, most of that hard work is done um, by Rosanna. Hi, Rosanna. She's the best, we can't run the board without her. Give her a hand. Uh, 
Uh, our annual report is out. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see that. That looks really, really good. Um, and that was largely the engagement team that put that together, chased people down uh, to get them to write their, uh, write their articles, chased me down to get me to write my letter. Uh, so, you know, they did all the hard work on that, um, and then we took the credits. So, um, but Jeff did a phenomenal job of making sure that it got printed in time. Um, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, we don't always get it out in time for Guadic. We try to get it out in time for Guadic. I'm really happy we did this year. Uh, and we've done a lot of work on trademark licensing. Now, we had, I think, prior to this year, in the entire history of the project, Alan, didn't you say two? two trademark agreements in the whole history of the project. Is that right? And we did four in the last year. So um, we've gotten a little bit more sensitive to trademark issues recently for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so we've, we've done a number of trademark agreements. We've done four trademark agreements in the last year. Three of those have to do with merchandise, um, which is very exciting because we now actually have a merchandise page. If you want to go buy GNOME stuff, you can go to gnome.org slash merchandise. <laughs> These are some great stories. They've got some awesome stuff. So uh, please you know, give them your support. If you want to buy merchandise, um, we should support the companies that support, them, that support us. Um, plus, they pay us royalties. So when you buy from them, you support the foundation. Uh, so with that, that is my very brief year in review. And I'm going to pass this over to Kat to tell you everything about our money. Okay, oh, finally, cool. Um, Sean, you're going to get a prolonged presentation later. As you said, you were so excited to hear the financial report. Everyone else gets a really short one. Okay, um, so we're getting a bit less in advisory board fees this year as we were in, than we were in previous years. On the other hand, that's offset by increased personal donations. And that's actually been, the personal donations have been increasing the whole time I've been the treasurer, which is the last three years. And we've gotten more money in the conference sponsorship this year, which was all great news. Um, our expenses, on the other hand, have remained stable, so we're doing quite well. And most of the money we're spending is going towards uh, hackfests, conferences, and internships. Quite simple, really. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a bit about our hackfests, because that's probably the most interesting thing for most of you. Uh, we had 12, hack for, uh, 12 sponsored attendees at five events in 2015, and in 2016 we were able to increase that to 19 sponsored attendees at six events, and we're only eight months through the year, so we're expecting to get more requests before the end of the year. Um, the travel budget is currently $40,000 per year, which is roughly what we need. We haven't had to ask for any more from the travel committee side, so that's going pretty well. And in case you want to know which breakfast we had in the 2016 financial year, you can have a look there. Uh, we spent most of the money on sending people to developer experience, user experience, and um, content app hackfests. And on top of that, we sent someone to Force Asia, which is a not GNOME conference, where we um, had them talk about GNOME and promote our community. Okay, so that's basically it. If you have any questions, you can ask those during the Q&A session later today. Okay? Yep. All right, so, um, thank you. Following this, we're going to get some reports from some of our teams that uh, keep GNOME running. Alan, are we just going to switch to your computer for a slide deck for that? We have some. I had release team up first. All right, Mike was going to tell us about the release team. Hi. I'm Michael Kahnzauer from the GNOME release team. So I'm going to give a quick overview of the stuff we've been doing in the past year, and also a quick preview of the stuff we're going to be doing in the next year. 
Uh, but before I do that, I want to uh, uh, make a special request for the audience, everyone here. When you're building stuff in JHBuild, uh, when you're noticing failures in continuous, please try to fix those. Help us out. That would be great. Uh, especially um, to keeping the stuff in JHBuild building, that really helps us uh, make it easier to attract new contributors. It helps the newcomers initiative out in uh, uh, their work to uh, get new, pe get new uh, developers interested in GNOME, and that's really important for us. Uh, we're also looking for fresh blood to join the release team, and the best candidates for that are, of course, the people who are fixing uh, things that are not building. Uh, so that would, that's uh, great to uh, keep in mind when you notice something that's not working. Instead of working around it, it's great to uh, try to get a fix committed for that. Uh, so uh, JHBuild is, of course, one of the, the JHBuild module sets that uh, the release team maintains. That's one of the big things we've we're continuously working on. Uh, be, uh, we use that to form the official GNOME releases that we've been releasing, as always. Release team releases, can you imagine? Um, the JHBO module sets have, until recently, been a little, uh, getting a little stale in that we've had applications in strange places sort of mixed between core and apps. Uh, a little haphazardly. So uh, uh, a couple of years ago, Alan Day suggested that we start cleaning that up. Uh, we've uh, recently completed a module set reorganization. Uh, the goal of the reorganization is to uh, provide a clear message to our downstream distributors. What is core to GNOME? What do we want distributions to have installed by default in their GNOME-based desktops? Uh, if it's uh, right now, if you go to the JHBuild module sets, if you look at any of our release emails that distinguish between the core suite and the app suite, the core suite is what we expect distributors to distribute by default. The app suite is what we expect distributors to not distribute by default. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, kind of a new thing for us. We haven't done this before. We're not sure how many downstreams are going to uh, uh, get in line uh, with this, but we're, we're hoping that we have some influence in improving the, the out-of-the-box user experience in downstream distributions. Uh, on that note, uh, we also have a sort of segregated uh, uh, area in GNOME apps for applications, for new up-and-coming applications that we want to eventually become core, but they're just not quite ready yet. And I'm pleased to announce that we're graduating two of those applications already. GNOME Calendar and GNOME Photos are going to be our new core apps, so uh, let's give a big round of applause for the maintainers of those applications. Uh, George and Rishi, thank you very much for uh, developing those applications and seeing them through to reach this point. Uh, one more thing I want to announce. The release team is taking on a new responsibility for the next year. We're going to be maintaining uh, the official GNOME flat pack runtimes that uh, uh, third-party distributors will be able to build applications uh, based on. So currently, the Flatpak, our, the GNOME Flatpak runtimes are sort of uh, uh, unofficially maintained. Well, they're officially maintained by Alex, who's been doing some awesome work on Flatpak, getting it ready to reach this uh, production, almost production-ready stable point. Uh, that's great. Uh, but now it's time to uh, uh, put the full efforts of the release team behind maintaining that. And one last point. Uh, we haven't decided completely how this is going to be done yet, so don't rush out, uh, get started yet. But we'd will, we would like for uh, GNOME applications to start maintaining Flatpak Builder JSON manifests within each application's uh, uh, Git repository. So stay on the lookout for more information on that. And that is our release team report. I'm going to hand this off to the next team. All right, thank you. Next up, Andre. Andre Clapper is going to tell us whether or not there are any bugs in GNOME software. <laughs> Zaro bugs found. Sweet, as if I was prepared. Um, 
Could I access a browser on this machine somehow? I know it's all magic. I'm not very good with computers, so sorry. <laughs> ah, perfect. Uh, yeah, on the screen would be. That's cool. Works for me. Um, as, as I'm not good in, in remembering uh, long URLs. Uh, <laughs> it might not provide the same result, but um, um, that's why I normally just copy and paste, hopefully. Yeah, because that's a Bugzilla URL, you know, um, and that's how the whole thing works. Uh, <laughs> Bugzilla is our bug tracker, so um, that's where you have all the data you never wanted to see. Um, work. Shortcuts for the win. Didn't work. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, um, so um, to not get you all uh, sleeping that quickly, um, there is something like a bug squad. We still have documentation. Bug squad, the intention behind that is that uh, people take a look at existing bug reports or feature requests in our uh, GNOME Bugzilla instance and um, ask the reporters for some more information or uh, help the developers save some time. Uh, it's been very dormant lately. So um, if you take a look at the, the statistics for the last uh, year, it's uh, 365 days. Um, you can see uh, here that some of the modules of our, of our projects uh, have become better when it comes to the number of uh, open bug reports, like GTK has, for example, a few less nowadays. Some are growing pretty fast, like GNOME Shell still. So uh, if, if you love to use GNOME Shell and uh, if you have some free time, take a look at the open bug reports and maybe try to reproduce some old ones or things like that and close them when you cannot reproduce anymore because this helps developers to have a shorter list of uh, open bug reports, especially like when they might not be relevant anymore. It's basically a bit of house cleaning. Um, but as I was saying, it's, it's been pretty dormant. So if you take a look at the, the top 15 bug closers here, um, basically all of them are developers. So, and the, tradi the traditional triager is more like a person um, not necessarily developing. But I think uh, we have lots of folks uh, who started with triaging and, and after three or four months, uh, sometimes being tempted to try themselves, like fixing one of these bug reports they just read and uh, starting to contribute code, which is a good uh, way to enter the community. Um, so um, these are yeah the, the top bug closers. Applause. <laughs> Um, we also have people reporting bugs, of course, where, where it's a bit more mixed. So the, the first six here also are developers, but then it, it gets a bit more like uh, into probably heavy users um, and other folks. Um, and there's people writing patches in Bugzilla, which has nothing to do with the bug squad, but there's still these statistics on this page, and I'm scrolling down. So um, there's some more people like this. And you also have people who review patches. Uh, and of course, this doesn't always happen in, in Bugzilla, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. But uh, at least we have people who are active. And um, that's all I think I can say. If anybody want, is, inter is interested in triaging bug reports, um, go to the mailing list, uh, Gnome Bug Squad, go on IRC, it's uh, bugs on, on GimpNet. And uh, happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I gotta close this thing. Where's my? Oh, I gotta find my slide again. <laughs> it's quite all right.
Petter will give us a report on the documentation team. Okay, so I have uh, three very short updates. So first off, we had the documentation sprint after the Open Health Conference in Cincinnati last year, September, uh, when we worked on updating mostly GNOME help in GNOME user docs model. <clears throat> and we also had a short planning session where we talked about restructuring a landing page uh, in GNOME help and other pages and categories and stuff like that. So it was, I think, very successful. It wouldn't happen without help from Sean and No Foundation, so thank you. Uh, second, Kat will be talking about documentation of State of the Union tomorrow, so be sure to come to her talk <laughs> at 3 p.m., right? Uh, so if you are interested in like, you know, more detail updates uh, about documentation, no land, that's the place to be, okay. And third, there will be a no documentation sprint after Gwadek starting Monday. So it's open to everybody. So if you are interested in GNOME documentation or in technical documentation in general, or just want to hang out with a cool bunch of people, uh, be sure to come Monday documentation sprint. Thank you. Next up, we will hear about our amazing Localization efforts, and I think we do have slides in. <laughs> no? All right, no, we don't have slides. We don't. It's okay, I guess. Um, so since we deal with translations, I think it's only fair that I do this in French. <laughs> and since we have a live stream, the first thing I want to say is, Coucou, maman. <laughs> No, I don't think you guys are ready yet for French, but prepare. Um, so it's business as usual. We have translated the last two releases. Uh, from 3.16 to 3.18, we lost one of the supported teams. And from 3.18 to 3.20, we lost two of them, I guess. Yes, that's it. So if you know uh, team coordinators, I would say that you should need you would need to encourage them and uh, help them with outreach. So if you speak a language that is not uh, English, reach out to people and try to get them to translate uh, GNOME. Um, and what else was the? Oh yeah. And um, in the recent year, the major news we have is the work to migrate from Intel tool to Get Text which uh, Matthias blogged about. So if you're interested in technical details, I invite you to read this blog post. Thank you. All right, now I'm sure that Alan will use his own slides because it's his turn to talk. Huh. Okay, uh, I've never done slides for this before. Like, I seem to be like making more work each year. Uh, so, design team. I'm going to go as quickly as I can, but there's like quite a lot of images to show, so it might just kind of become a little kaleidoscopic. But that's fine. So, uh, who are we? We're a huge team. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Jakob and I continue to be the, the core of the team, but we have help from lots of other people. Uh, Lapo, who's not here, does lots of the theming work. Andreas, who's working on maps. Bastian, who's working on Polarium, various other things. I'm really happy to be working with uh, Robin Taffel this year from Endless, from their design team. Uh, we have a new Cantorel maintainer from this year. That's Nikolaus, who's been doing great work. And then we have this amazing group of uh, people doing internships or mentoring internships. We have no less than uh, three interns working on usability testing this summer, like as we speak under Jim Hall. So we've got like a, our own like dedicated uh, testing team for the first time. And we also have uh, Carla, who is here, who you probably saw her lightning talk, which is really awesome and really excited to be working with her. Um, lots of work over the past year, like pretty much any UX changes that happen in the projects run through us, but we try to push things forward in the kind of uh, direction that we're interested in, but we also try to support the wider community and what they want to do. Ah. And I'm just going to run through some of this work really fast. Uh, so, software. Software is the app that just keeps on giving. Like, you, you'd think, like, you know, we've been doing it for years now, and I thought it would be done, but it's just, like, keeps growing and growing and growing. Uh, so we added, like, uh, operating system updates. Uh, we've been working on this fancy new uh, landing page, which is kind of work in progress at the moment. This was some of the work we did with Robin. So it's trying to make it a little more visually engaging and interesting the first time you open it up. Like, it's maybe a little bit dull right now. Uh, we added user reviews. That's quite a complex piece of design. There's all kind of things going on there, like which reviews you show, how you rate them, people can rank them, people can report nasty reviews. It's kind of complicated. And we've done lots of other work in software uh, to get like um, flat pack integration in there and all of that kind of thing. Uh, done quite a lot of work on Builder, trying to help out Christian. Um, so lots of work on just a general schema of how everything kind of fits together in what's quite a complex application. So some of the changes that you're going to see coming in 3.22, we've been quite involved with um, these kind of build controls in the top and how you switch between modes, things like that. Um, find and replace in Builder, something we worked on. Uh, the process for creating a new project. We worked on that. We've done lots of work on files, Nautilus. We've revamped the zoom levels, the controls for uh, how you change the, the view. That's something that we did in response to usability testing that was done last year. So we do actually respond to usability testing. Yay. Um, battery naming we worked on. Um, we've also been working on archive integration recently. We've been working on Flatpak. Jakob made a nice icon. We made a website for Flatpak. We wrote developer documentation for Flatpak. Don't, oh, scary. Um, Bastian's been doing great work on Polari. We have really nice um, user popovers that he's been working on for uh, the design for, for next release. Um, we reworked all the settings, how you join channels, how you configure servers. And there's been quite a lot of visual polish there. We worked on photo editing, which is really awesome. We worked, Andreas has done lots of work on maps. We have um, open street map editing, uh, all the designs for routes, which uh, printing, which Andreas worked on. We have um, public transport uh, routing, which Andreas is doing a talk on tomorrow, last thing. Yeah, which should be really interesting. Uh, lots of work on settings. Uh, this is a big project that's going on at the moment. Will it work? It kind of works. So we're reworking the settings shell, heading towards something a little different from what we've had during the GNOME 3 era, switching to this sidebar rather than the icon grid. Um, various reasons for that, but um, one of the main ones is it provides a bit more of a kind of guided experience for the user 
rather than throwing everything at them at once, you have this kind of list with the kind of the most interesting things at the top. Also means we can have a se separate devices section that's maybe a little more dynamic than what we have at the moment. This is in turn requiring that we redesign quite a number of uh, set individual settings panels to fit in with this. So we've kind of redesigned like quite a high proportion of the settings over the past 12 months. Uh, we have uh, keyboard shortcuts, which has, is kind of all pretty much done now. That's a master. We had mouse and touch settings from last time. Uh, Jakob's been working on uh, Wacom stuff. Uh, completely redesigned the network settings. That was fun. Um, and we've done all of these other things as well. <laughs> we've done quite a lot of uh, epiphany. Uh, got the testing in there. After the CSS stuff landed in GTK last cycle, Lapo had to rewrite the vast majority of the, the theme, which was a pretty major undertaking. Yeah, so we've done a lot of stuff over the last 12 months. Um, we've also been to a couple of events. We went to Madrid in December and talked about content apps. And in end of January this year, we went to Rio to spend time with the, the great folks at Endless. This is us with the design team there, where we had a really productive meeting and we went out into the field and met some of their users and that was all really cool. Okay. Oh, and the GTK Hat Fest. That's it. All right, next up, we're going to hear from Narizzi uh, about the engagement team, as well as uh, quite a few other people on our outreach initiatives. Thank you. And I hear this is on, so great. So it sounds like, actually, as I've been talking to a lot of the community, not everyone is even aware that we have an engagement team or what the engagement team does. So I think that one of our first goals is to really solidify this as a team and to define our goals so that everybody knows what we do, how you guys can help, how we can help you, et cetera. So for the sake of blatantly putting that up in writing, um, we have some external goals and those include things like PR, outreach, uh, you know, attracting new contributors, um, and we also have internal goals, like helping to retain contributors, helping to reinvigorate the community, uh, promoting cross-collaboration across teams. And so I'm going to give a quick uh, presentation on what we've been doing over the last year. But after that, Bastian and um, Carlos are going to come up and tell you a little bit more about the newcomers initiative they've been leading. And after that, uh, Lassie's gonna talk a little bit more about outreach. So really quickly, some key accomplishments. This is kind of like, what does the engagement team do? Well, um, one, we do the annual report, and uh, Sean already mentioned this, but a lot of that entails just, you know, making sure people write it. Um, this year, we decided to come up with a format that was a little bit easier to read on people's um, screens. Jeff is waving it in the back. Uh, we're going to be giving those out to you at the end of this uh, meeting so that you guys can all take them and use them to help us fundraise, which is another thing that we're going to be focusing on in the upcoming year. Um, but yeah, use the annual report as a tool to help explain what it is the GNOME Foundation does um, and hopefully again to get support from your employers or companies where you work. Um, we have been, we're in charge of all the social media outlets, so any Facebook, Twitter things that you've seen go up, that's us. Um, news items, uh, and we run the gnome.org website, so uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but it's something that we want to revamp. Uh, and conference planning. Uh, the new one that we're doing is Las Gnome, led by Sri, um, and we'll go over that a little bit too. 
So one of the things that we've done since last Guadec is start a blog post about the community. And the point of this is that, you know, what I've heard again and again is that the reason why so many people are here are because of the community members. This is an awesome place to be a part of, and it really is about the social connections and like all of the, the people here. So we really wanted to put a spotlight on that, and we have started to, I think we have about six blog posts, maybe four, um, but we wanna do that at least once a month. If you guys have any suggestions or nominations, please send them to us. We'd love to hear from you, um, and you know, spotlight who you are as individuals. We're also trying to make it easier for people to start local groups. This is one, we started one in San Francisco. We actually have a lot of people, I mean, Endless is based there, so, and a lot of us belong to GNOME, um, but we also know some other people who, uh, you know, have contributed to GNOME, but maybe fallen off, or um, we, we want to, San Francisco is a huge hub of innovation. We want to attract new contributors, new users. And so one of the things that we would like to do in the upcoming year is make it easier for people to uh, start local groups on their own. We here in Romania, um, you know, at universities, it might be a great place to help you guys spread the word, encourage other students. Um, and we can do that by providing t-shirts, stickers, things that can help grab people's attention, I don't know, bribe them to join us. Um, and that's like one of the things that we'll be working on. Uh, these are some pictures from a release party. Also, if you are interested in throwing a release party, please come to us and we can try to support you in that effort. Uh, Lost Gnome, again, again, it's happening in Portland. Even if you can't make it, you should encourage other people that you know to come. Or again, sponsorship money, I will always plug for fundraising. So what's next? As I mentioned, uh, we really want to focus on local groups. Um, you'll notice that in my slides, I didn't really include a lot from GNOME Asia, and that's something that we would love to do more so in the future, really connect uh, GNOME Asia and in Latin America and all over the world where people are you know, putting on these great efforts, um, doing community events. We want to make learn from each other and help support them in their efforts. We also really want to revamp the website. Um, I think the last time it was adapted was 2003 or something, so quite a while back. Uh, for internal communication, we want to um, you know, figure out how to help all of you feel like you are valued and uh, appreciated and also um, potentially have things like international hack days where we um, all get together even if we're remote uh, and you know have big pushes around a particular thing or um, help to again attract new contributors on select days throughout the year. So all of those things um, were brainstorming. <laughs> And then we, we really want to encourage new, fresh ideas. Um, some people had proposed doing something like a This Week in GNOME newsletter, where we would uh, talk about what GNOME is doing, more so than just on the release days. Um, and so we, we want these ideas to surface and then help to make them happen. Uh, did that go back? What? OK. Hold on just a moment. That was a duplicate side. Um, okay, so how you can help. We need design help. Um, our designers are already pretty stretched with product stuff, but we need people to focus on helping us make um, marketing materials and revamp the website and a whole bunch of other things. So if you are a designer or no designers, please funnel them my way. Um, content strategists, non-technical people, we need those. Uh, social media marketers, and we need also developers because um, we wanna work with groups to help them know how to communicate better um, their, their updates, their, uh, like what they need. Um, I know there has been 
um, miscommunication at times with um, the way that you release news. Um, and so we, we can help potentially edit that or make it so that more non-technical audiences read it and get excited. Um, this is again to help with getting new users and, uh, and helping gain new contributors. And lastly, submit your photos. Those help a lot in marketing materials. And so I see you up there with a the camera. Please send those over. <laughs> um, and anybody else who's taken pictures throughout this event, if you guys can send them to me, uh, which is here my information on the next slide, um, that would be fantastic. Um, if you're interested in joining us, please uh, come to one of our regular meetings or just shoot me uh, an email or ping me on IRC. Always happy to talk. If you're a newcomer, I'm a friendly face. I'm happy to talk to you and help point you out to where you want to go next. And with that, I'm going to end and let Carlos and Bastian come up. Thank you. Hmm. Hello? Okay. So you may know this, but the newcomers initiative takes care about the first timers uh, coming to NOM, the people that uh, wants to contribute to NOM for first time. So we make sure that they have a smooth, a smooth uh, first time contribution uh, process in them. Because we think it's important to keep the flux of new people coming to the project is what um, keeps the project alive, is what ensures the sustainability of the project. For that, we have to actually adapt to the tools, the systems, the visuals and the workflow that uh, new generation of developers are using right now, which is quite different of what developers of 10 years ago were using. So we have been working on part of it. We have been working on the newcomers wiki page guide for newcomers that Bastian will explain. Yeah, so for the past year, we completely revamped the and rebranded what was previously known as the GNOME Love Initiative, which is now known as the Newcomer Guide, uh, aimed to help uh, and be, be a short and concise and visually pleasing guide that newcomers can use to get involved with a project that is suitable for newcomers. And um, um, yeah. So if you are interested in, in helping out, feel free to get in touch with us uh, and you're also free to check it out uh, here at the, the Newcomers webpage. We also have an IRC channel, uh, hash newcomers. So um, uh, that's the place to help newcomers if, if uh, you'd like to do that. Yeah. What do you What do you need? I'm not sure. I have my I have a slides here as well. Yeah. That's fine. I, I <laughs> that's fine. We can do it. We can do it like this. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. okay, so this is about the outreach efforts of GNOME. Um, so this one will be very quick. Uh, this year we have 20 Google Summer of Code students. Originally we had 21 and one of the students dropped out during the first community bonding phase voluntarily because he 
uh, notice that he just couldn't make it. Um, and we have nine outreach students um, in the two rounds that happened this year, in the December round from 2015 and in the May to August round. And out of those students, we have uh, nine Google Summer of Code students and three outreach students here at Goetic. Uh, and there's, then there's one thing I would like to say about uh, those outreach programs. They do bring contributors to GNOME, and I know that many of the long-term GNOME contributors are that they, they came via a Google Summer of Code or via GNOME Outreachy, uh, via Outreachy is now called. I always get that confused, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so if you feel like you could you would like to try out mentoring and you don't know yet if that's something for you, feel free to approach us. We have a team of five administrators for uh, the Google Summer of Code and we have Marina. I think you are doing it alone. We have uh, Mar Marina and Karen and Meg. Meg. Oh, right, Meg. Sorry. Um, and, and those people will be happily helping you uh, to figure out if you want to mentor or not. And if you feel like this could be something for you, I really, really urge you, uh, speak to them, and let's get more people to go. Awesome. And uh, so I wanted to add a little bit about Outreach. In December, so for the last round, uh, it, in addition to being open to women, uh, trans men and genderqueer people internationally. It has also expanded to people of color who are underrepresented in technology in the United States, such as African Americans and Latinas. So far, the program as a whole only had three men from these populations, and GNOME didn't have any interns from these populations. But going forward, that's another way that, that's going to help uh, GNOME expand its diversity. And so how do I go to Zoom? Oh, am I? I am already on the next slide. Okay. Um, and so I just wanted to present some data that we got from um, your Guadic registrations uh, this and last year. Um, so we have about 10% women at Guadic this year, which is reflective of the level of outreach we do. Of course, there is a lot of room for improvement here. And, you know, as Lassie spoke, uh, becoming a mentor for outreach is a great way to improve diversity in the GNOME community. And also you can encourage people who you know qualify for outreach to, to apply for the program. We've had so many great referrals over all, all these years. Uh, there's going to be a diversity buff on Monday and Tuesday, so please come to that if uh, you'd like to work on um, this and other ways we can improve diversity in the GNOME community. And also we're going to have uh, a women's dinner tonight uh, to help women and gender queer people in our community connect and discuss common issues. Uh, so if you are uh, a member of this group, uh, please meet me and other people outside uh, after the AGM.